So today we're going to talk about mapping rules and it rules. If you can understand this equation here, which explains all of the transformations that you can possibly do to any function. Now remember the function can be a series of points. It could be a parent function. And that's what we're going to look at today on how these all change. I'm going to do a number of different examples and do some examples from your textbook from the end of chapter review. So you can follow along with the textbook, which I'll give the link to as well at the end of the lesson if you don't have it. So when you have it written in this format, these two letters here, the A and the C, are the only parts that affect the Y. Now remember the Y changes are outside the bracket, the X changes are inside the bracket. So that means that K and D affect the X, these changes. They're inside the brackets, that's where you find them. This is going to be really easy once you figure this out. It works all the time. And the Y changes are outside the bracket, outside. So this is telling you you're going to make a change to the X part. These tell you the Y parts. So if I have a basic coordinate, and I know your textbook asks you to do this a number of times. It'll say, what happened to X and Y under this transformation? So we write it like this. We say the coordinate X, Y will be mapped onto and I see here what changes X, what changes Y. So the K changes X and so does the D. Now remember that everything to do with X is backwards to what you would logically think it should do. It says K here, K times this stuff. So we divide the X by K. So just believe me, X's are weird. We divide by K, it says minus D, we're going to add D. The explanation you can see back in the previous lesson. So we divide the X by K, we add D. Y's are normal, X's are weird, Y's are normal. Because Y is normal, I do A times the Y and I add the C, whatever the C value is. It could be positive or negative. Okay, so that's all you need to remember. Now watch what happens. Let's say, I'll give you a, an equation. I'll just make one up here. Let's say y is equal to minus 2f uh, 3x plus 2 minus 4. And I ask you, what is the mapping rule? If I had the point, if I had the point 1, 2, on the graph of the function, what would be the new point under this transformation? So I want to know what is the new point. So the first thing you need to do is make a mapping rule. So I'm going to say, okay, well, all x's and y's will be changed according to this transformation. So I look at what happened to x, and again, the x stuff inside the brackets. So here's my K value, here's my D value, right? K and D, and minus two and minus four, those are my A and my C values. So I say X and Y go to, I take the X, well, it looks like multiply, but I know X's are weird, so I'm gonna divide the X by three. It says plus two, I'm going to minus two. And my y's will be minus 2 times y minus 4. The y's are really easy. You can't make a mistake with those ones. They're just right there. As long as you remember that the two outside the brackets are y's, they, anything inside. X's are weird. They stay inside. They do strange things. Remember that. Okay, so here's my mapping rule. So the point 1, 2, so that means that 1, 2, I'm going to say therefore, Therefore, 1, 2 would go to, and I would do 1 divided by 3 minus 2, and minus 2 times 2 minus 4. And that would give me a third minus 2. So that's 1 third minus 6 
thirds. One minus six would be minus five thirds. And the y minus two times two is minus four, minus four more is minus eight. So there you go. One, two went to this. So it's important that you can find the values here first. Make sure that you're adjusting them properly. The x divided by the k and the opposite sign of d. And then the y's being normal, a, c. So a, y plus c, x divided by k plus d. If you can remember this, you can do any transformation. I swear you can. Okay, so let's go to the textbook. And this is on page 87 of your textbook. I'm going to do some of the examples that are a little bit different from just saying the mapping rule. But remember, this is the critical part for your, your transformations of a parent function. So let's go to page 87. So page 87. And I'm going to start with number 14 because the most critical things are in, in 1.8 here. So number 14. And it says three transformations are applied to y equals x squared. So you're starting with y equals x squared. It says a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Factor of 2. A translation 3 units right. Translation 3 units right and a translation four units down. Translation four units down. And they want to know, is the order of the transformations important? If you're doing this one part at a time, yes. You must do anything that involves stretches and compressions <coughs> and reflections before you shift left, right, up and down. So the answer to A is yes, it is important. Is there any other sequence of these transformations that could produce the same result? Well, as long as you do the vertical stretch first, the translation order doesn't matter. Now, it doesn't ask you this, but I would say, give me the new transformed function. What would be the equation if I vertically stretch by a factor of 2 and I go 3 right and 4 down? So I'm going to say, well, that would be y is equal to vertical stretch. That's my a value. That's a change to y, right? Four units down, that's a change to y as well. So I'm going to put that one out here. And everything else is in the brackets. And it's squared because this is a quadratic that I'm applying the transformation to. And it said it goes three units right. So that means it's going to be minus three here. So 2, x minus 3 squared minus 4, that would describe this transformation. Now number 15 is more like I was just showing you now. It says the point 1, 4 is on the graph of y equals f at x. Determine the coordinates of the image of this point on the graph of, and then they give you this transformation. They want you to do 3f at minus 4 bracket x plus 1 close the bracket minus 2 okay so here is my transformation here's some point I don't have the equation of the function so I have to just make up a mapping rule here so any x y on my function is going to go to now I have to look at the x's where do you find x inside the brackets right here's all the x stuff here x and the y i think it did in the other color last time but color doesn't matter it's positioning that matters here this is a y change this is a y change if you have to write this out put a little circle around things before you start it's a good idea make sure you can you know you know where things are so i'm going to take the x's well let's do the y's first because i know you're going to know that one 3y minus 2. It's very, very simple. 3y minus 2. If you only get half of it, right, you should be able to get that half. Now the x's, look, I have a minus 4 here. That's my k. So I'm going to divide my x by minus 4. 
Or I could just say minus x over 4. It means the same thing. It's still positive divided by a negative. So minus x over 4, minus x over 4. It says plus 1. What do I do? Hope you got it now. X's are weird. I'm going to subtract 1 after you do this operation. So my point 1, 4 is going to go to plug in the 1, minus 1 quarter minus 1. And I do 3 times the y value, which is 4, and subtract 2. And that's going to give me the new coordinate, minus 1 quarter minus, this is 4 quarters, right? 4 over 4 is 1. 1 minus 4, minus 1 minus 4 is minus 5 quarters. And 3 times 4 is 12, minus 2 and 10. So 1, 4 goes to this. And I had, I was given this transformation. So all I had to do was make the mapping rule. Mapping rule. So that tells you any point on the graph is going to be governed by that mapping rule. Okay, so let's take a look at number 16a. It says, explain what you would need to do to graph, to do to the graph of y equals f at x, to graph the function, so they give you another function here, so they give you y is equal to minus 2f, this is going to be the tricky one for you, 1 third x plus 4, close the bracket, minus 1. So, this is going to be a little tricky because you should recognize, and, and I swear, most of the mistakes when people do transformations is they forget about the fact that the, there is a coefficient in front of the x here that must be factored first. You must divide each of these terms by one third to make this x by itself. So they really wanted this. Always check to make sure that's factored, even if it's just a minus sign. Remember, it's got to come out. So x plus, so what's 4 divided by 1 third? Now don't tell me it's 4 over 3. 4 divided by 1 over 3 equals 4 times 3 over 1. When you divide by fractions, you invert and multiply. So that's going to give me 12 in here square bracket, minus 1. Okay, now do you see how we pull that out? And you should always double check when you factor something out. If you pull out a third, if I did a third times x, I would get 1 third x. 1 third times 12 is 4. So if you'd written 4 thirds here and did 1 third times 4 thirds, you would have got 9 thirds, which of, sorry, you would have got 8 thirds, which of course wouldn't make any, any sense at all. So make sure that you divide properly with your fraction here. Now, the rest of the question said, what, what would you need to do to the graph to get this? So let's write the mapping rule. What would be the mapping rule for this? What would I do to any point on the function? So any point on the function is going to follow the rule, the mapping rule that any point on the original function is going to go to now you say what you're going to do to the x's. So your k is one third. So one over one third, one divided by one third. That's another fraction question here. Always easier to see them like this, isn't it? One divided by one third is one times three over one. So that means it's going to be three. So I'm going to do three x's plus 12. Nope, minus 12. Okay, so here I've written what happens to any x. I divided it by 1 third, which means multiplied by 3. I subtract 12, and my y would be minus 2y minus 1. Okay, so then finally they say graph the function in part a for f of x equals x squared. So they want you to use transformations. I'm not going to finish this for you, but you can. 
if you use the graph of x squared, you would use all the coordinates for key points for x squared. So I would do like minus 2 and 4, minus 1 and 1, 0 and 0, 1 and 1, 2 and 4. And you would apply this rule to each of these points and that would give you the new transformed function points and then you can graph them. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for now. And if you have any of the homework questions that you're having trouble with that you'd like me to, to do for you in another video, just leave me a note below. And again, I will make you a link to the textbook page so that you can follow along with the homework questions. Bye for now. Happy studying.